Hello everyone, welcome back to another video review. Today I'm taking a look at the LEGO Star Wars set number 75283, the Armored Assault Tank, or the AAT, from Star Wars The Clone Wars Season 7. Sort of, we'll get to that in a second, but before we take a look at that, the set itself, let's take a look at the box. So, here we have the box, it's the AAT and everything that it does. Here are our minifigures, we have some battle droids, Ahsoka Tano and a clone trooper. This is for ages 7 and up. Of course, that's just suggestion. I had to put that on there. 75283. It's the Armored Assault Tank, or the AATTM. It's 286 pieces. Building toy in several different languages. Disney! Flip it over to the back. Here is more of the stuff that the set does. Uh, you can go to lego.com slash Star Wars with your parents' permission, of course. Uh, Disney! Uh, and you can also play this in LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, a video game that does not have a release date yet. So yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it for the box. Well, for now, I'm, I'm gonna get back, I'm gonna get back to that later when we get through with everything else. So yeah, here we have the latest iteration of the AAT, a LEGO set that is now on its, I think this is its fourth iteration? Yeah, that's right. Because the original version of the AAT came out in 1999 alongside the Phantom Menace. Then it wasn't until 2009 or 2010 when we got the other version, which we'll be taking a look at later. And then we got, and then we got another Phantom Menace style tan AAT in 2012, I think. And then here we are in, well, I'm recording this in 2021, but this was released in 2020. And then here we are in, uh, you know, tw uh, 2020 version. Of this set so uh, it's it's a uh, it, it's something I, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and take a look at the tank really quick instead of the minifigures just because yeah it, it's something I actually when the original pictures for this thing came out I wasn't really that big on it but having it in hand I actually like it a lot more um, I do have a couple issues with it one of those being, what the heck is with this gun barrel? This thing is huge. This was way too long. It, it looks, it looks comically, it's comically long. This thing is way too long. This is not the, the length of, this is like a sniper AAT. This is, you know, this is like, we're supposed to be bombarding stuff from afar. This is a, this is a very, very long barrel that an AAT is not supposed to have. But I mean, it, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's, you know, it's kind of like a, it's not, it's trying to be accurate, but at the same time, it's also kind of be trying to be a stylized Lego version of an AAT, which I guess I kind of like. And and honestly, I like the build. The build the build is nice. Uh, it just doesn't necessarily hold a candle to the uh, 2010 version. But but I mean, this this thing this thing isn't bad. It's 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 totally serviceable. I mean, it's it's small as you can see. Um, the these. Do have a habit of moving more than I think they should, which is a little annoying. Uh, there is no, there is no door back here. It's just, it's just a uh, brick. But so, if you want to access the internal cockpit here, then you just lift that up. So then there are other battle droids. So I guess we'll go ahead and be taking a look at the battle droid really quick. So here are the kind of jungle operator b1 battle droids that we have seen that i think that their first canon appearance was definitely in clone wars specifically ambush uh season one episode one but this design originates from a hasbro figure from 2005 so it's it's kind of it's kind of cool that uh dave filoni and the team on clone wars incorporated what was originally a toy only design and put it in the show that's uh that that's kind of a cool thing and it's something that uh, you know th this was like the this was like the first instance of them doing this and it would definitely not be the last instance of them doing that i mean you even look at uh no spoilers but you look at the mandalorian there's a whole bunch of things in the mandalorian that dave filoni and john vavro put in there that are references to the toys of certain characters that only appeared in the toys of certain characters and now have appeared in canon thanks to their appearances in the Mandalorian. So you do get two of these guys. Here's another one. Moving him out of the way, we can close the hatch up here. You cannot really fit this guy in here and close the hatch. You'd have to, I think, 
just even with the, with the head down. I mean, it, it closes, but it's not completely shut all the way. Just give him back his blast here. Oh, and also it details that these are not the typical black blasters. This is more of the gunmetal. You can see it there. That's it's actually more of a gunmetal gray. It's actually not coming across on camera very well. This is actually more of a gunmetal gray that we first got with the uh, Rogue One stuff. That's the first time I recall seeing uh, gunmetal gray Star Wars blasters. So that, that's kind of a cool detail. I'm not sure why these battle droids necessarily need gunmetal gray blasters. Um, but I guess it's just the, to di differentiate them from the clone blaster that comes in this set. So this does have the missile firing action here so that is triggered by these back here so all you need to do is pull back on this and boom fires off like that and then of course you can just slide it back in should have been a little click there well and then also, if you do, you know, since these things, since these things do move a little bit, you can actually use these to. Uh... Oh well, maybe not. Oh, yeah, I guess I guess it is kind of going the wrong way. I thought you could. Yeah, well, hold on, maybe. Well, because here's because here's the ha here's how this works: is you pull back on this thing, and then that is connected to that, which then that's what actually hits the missile. So I don't know, maybe if we really press on that here. Nope. Mm -mm. No, now I'm, I'm I'm risking tearing that off there. So so never mind. I th I thought I thought you could, but uh, you cannot actually do that. So moving on to more minifigures here, we have the 332nd Ahsoka's clone trooper from season seven of Clone Wars. Comes with the new clone trooper face. So, a very, very nice looking minifigure, and for comparison, here we have the original 501st Clone Trooper from 2013. So, it's interesting to see the, the more stylized, this is definitely based off of the Clone Wars animated design, and then this is based on the Clone Wars animated design for a Clone Trooper, but using more of the live-action aesthetics, because, for instance, as you can see... And I just dropped him. As you can see, this guy has kind of the black bar that kind of separates the top of the helmet from the face, where this guy does not, because for whatever reason, the clone, the clones in the Clone Wars did not have that, where the clones in the live action movies did. So that's that's kind of interesting. That that you know these are obviously based on animation models but this one is choosing to be a little more leaning towards live action instead of the stylized animation which uh, animation model which is which is interesting and then i suppose if you if you wanted to just to see what they would look like there is a there's the swap actually i sort of kind of i kind of like this better <laughs> i kind of <laughs> i think i think I think this guy. I think this guy looks better with the Ahsoka Trooper helmet on. I think it has to do with the blue on the arms. There's just it just it helps the blue stand out a little bit more on this guy, and then and this looks a little better because the the, the blue looks on on the new on the newer on the newer body with the older helmet. This kind of just looks a little. Um, the what am I what am I trying to say here? The I can't I can't think of the word right now. But everything just looks the color scheme just looks a little more even. So that's so you can do you can do that if if you want. That's just kind of a fun. And then just so you guys can can see it here is the old the old clone trooper face just for fun. I I kind I kind of I kind of miss the old the old clone trooper designs. I'm uh, the head, head face designs. I'm not gonna lie. And then for more comparisons, here we have the newest Ahsoka Tano minifigure and the original Ahsoka Tano minifigure from 2000. And, I guess yeah, from 2008. Boy, 
Well, I mean, I talked about the, if if uh, if you guys watched my reviews of the Mandalorian season two, uh, the the uh, you know I, at this point I think it's fair game to spoil it, considering it's been all over the internet and it's been like a month, a little longer. Um, I I talked about Ahsoka and the journey that that character has gone through in in the fandom, but man, what man, what a journey! I mean, here we have 2008, here we have 2020 Ahsoka. So I mean, it's 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 really it's really cool to see the growth of this character, both literally and metaphorically. So. And and also just the design changes here because the, this one utilizes the uh, the word trying to stick to the uh, to the Clone Wars animated look with the minifigures so that's why you have the great big eyes and mouths and you know the, the going back to the original Clone Trooper face there and you know, it's like not everyone was a big fan of that not everyone was a big fan of that design choice I I liked it fine I didn't find it creepy or anything but a lot of people are kind of weirded out by it so. Now, this Ahsoka does have a double-sided face. So we'll just flip that around, and there's her headpiece. So then here's a little more stern, ready for battle face. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for this set. So now we'll go ahead and move into a direct comparison here. Just move these minifigures off to the side. So here we have the 2010 AAT, and um, this thing is awesome. This thing is way better in every way, shape, or form compared to this version. I love this thing. This thing is so good. Uh, it's it's a little more it's a little more size to scale, which you know Lego isn't always size. I mean, look at the Lego Death Star. There is no way you can make a size to scale Lego Death Star. Um, but I mean, this thing's a little, a little closer to the actual scale that an AAT would be. Uh, it has, I mean, it has just more details. Like back here, I mean, there is an actual door to get back in there. Uh, well, I mean, technically, it's a like a little speeder thing, but it replicates the door that would be back there. I mean, you can, but then you can also, you know, get into there. Um, there's, there's more details on. You know, on these little things back here, which you know they these move around too. Uh, the only the only thing that I knock that I knock this set for uh, is the fact that it has flick fire missiles. Which, if you're not aware, the guns the guns here are actually flick fire missiles, which I think is dumb. I don't know. I mean, the, the, this set came out in the age when flick fire missiles were were the thing. So I don't know why they really decided that the that the cannons needed to be flick fire missiles when they're when they're not. Um, I don't know why they couldn't have added like some flip fire missiles down here and some, some sort of mechanism in the back, uh, but uh, yeah, no, this this, this thing is awesome. I I really love this thing. This thing, yeah, it, it's it's good. I mean, I think I think for what it is, it's definitely good. But it does not hold a candle to this thing. This thing is just awesome. I mean, it's and and honestly, that this is kind of getting into the crux of my problems with this set and it. It's my it's my problems with this set, but it's also my problems with Lego Star Wars as of recent in general, and that this thing is way too expensive. For reference, this thing was fifty or sixty dollars back in twenty ten, um, and it had a and it had a piece count to match that. This thing released in twenty twenty has less than three hundred pieces, and is forty stinking dollars. So this thing this this set is $20 less than this set and has like 300 fewer pieces but is uh, but yeah it's it's not as expensive as this set oopsie <laughs> it's not as expensive as as this guy was but you were really getting what you paid for here as opposed to this guy so that's kind of my that's kind of my big problem with with this set is that it is way too expensive. Now you do get some exclusive minifigures. I will I will admit that. So, I mean, you have this ex exclusive Ahsoka, and then you have this exclusive Clone Trooper, and then you have some. Th these aren't exclusive battle droids, but these are battle droids that are not seen as often. Typically, you only get these battle droids when it comes to the uh, when it comes to the Kashyyyk sets that they uh, re-release every couple years. But I uh, mean, it's it's. 
$40 for less than 300 pieces. And I know you've kind of got these larger pieces here. But I, and a, and a couple exclusive minifigures, but I mean, this, this set is just way too overpriced. I'm sorry, this, this is not worth $40. Now, I did not get this set for $40. I actually managed to find it on sale at Walmart for $30. For $30, this set is worth it. Yes, it's only, it's 286 pieces, but when you round up, it's closer to, it is close to 300 pieces, which, you know, if, if we're going on the price per part ratio that, a hundred pieces typically equals ten dollars. Then yeah, I, I this this set is definitely worth thirty dollars, but it is not worth forty dollars. So I guess I'm just gonna say right here that yeah, it's a nice set. It's fine. I I kind of do like the smaller. I mean for for, uh, for this being a thirty dollar AAT, this thing is not bad. For uh, the the build is fun. It's it's kind of interesting. I mean it's the the gigantic gun is a little bit funny. But, uh, I mean, this is not a bad $30 set. The only problem is that this is not marketed as a $30 set. This is a $40 set. And, hmm, I wonder who we can blame for that. Disney! So, yeah, that's... So, that's... That's really the reason I do that every single time whenever I review a Lego Star Wars set or Marvel. Well, actually, no. For whatever reason, the Star Wars sets are the only sets that have the Disney logo on there besides, like, the Disney princess stuff. Because you'd think that Marvel would have the Disney logo on there since they're also owned by Disney, but they don't. It's just it's just the Lego Star Wars sets for whatever reason. So that that's the reason that I do that kind of running gag with all this is where I kind of, you know, like, shake my fist in the air, old man yells at Cloud... I'm angry at Disney. It's because since Disney has taken over, the Lego Star Wars sets have kind of started to become more expensive, and you're getting less in them for more. You're you're buying you're buying less for more money, which is unfortunate. And it's because Disney wants a larger cut of the, of them profits. Um, I mean, they're a business. It makes sense, but it's just. Sometimes it's not that bad. I mean, honest, uh, what was it, a couple years ago? Um, I'm trying to think of what year it was, but it, it, was, it was 2018. 2018, the summer, like the summer wave of 2018, they had a lot of really good, they, There's a that, that was a really good, that was a really good wave for LEGO Star Wars, the summer of 2018, where there wasn't, the, there was a couple new solo sets that had come out after Solo had been out earlier in the year. Um, that was when Clone Wars announced, was announced to come back, so the Anakin's Jedi Starfighter was remade and re-released. Um, but the, that that way, there was a lot of there was a lot of great sets that that uh, had a good price per part ratio, and that you know they were very economical. And it's a, that that was just a really good set wave. That there was a, there was a, it was just overall you know good builds, you know good pretty good price points. But then since the I mean, that was like the last time there's been actually you know really greatly priced lego star wars sets uh when they did the 20th anniversary stuff in 2019 that stuff was a little overpriced but that i kind of forgave them on because it's like uh it's your 20th anniversary it's special boxes special editions of these sets and i can kind of forgive maybe these sets being a little more expensive because they're special but then we've moved on to regular stuff again you know rise of skywalker came out uh those sets were released, and the and the larger price tags have kind of stuck around. So this set is unfortunately a victim of those larger price tags. So not really worth the forty dollars, but if you can find it for thirty dollars, then yeah, definitely pick it up. But that's also a problem is that because it comes with these you know high value exclusive minifigures over here, this set is this set like the five of first battle pack, which I have yet to actually get my hands on. I can't find it. it you know this this is this is a high demand set. So waiting to see maybe you can snag it for thirty dollars is not always going to be an option. If you really want this set for these minifigures, you're you're probably going to have to go ahead and get it for the full forty. Because if you see it, that may be your only opportunity to grab it, which is which is unfortunate. So I, I'm I'm really mixed on this set. I mean, obviously, I mean, I think you guys know the reason I got this. I mean, I was not looking for another AAT. I have I have an AAT. You just saw it. I'm perfectly happy with that AAT. I didn't need another one, but you know, this one came with the exclusive minifigures, and I didn't necessarily want to wait around to see what the prices would have been on Bricklink. Also came with these battle droids. I didn't have that type of battle droid before. So I mean it was like so this is basically a, a minifigure pack 
for me, then that comes with it. It's like, okay, I mean, it, this, this build is fine, but it's it's nothing it's nothing special. But for thirty dollars, for thirty dollars, it's totally passable. I I think it's fine for thirty dollars. Just that's 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 the moral of the story with this with this set review is that if you can fight it for thirty, hey, that's great. It's totally worth the thirty bucks. Forty, and eh, not so much. So. So before we wrap up here, I will go ahead and uh, kind of show off my my little my canon modifications here. So you can kind of deconstruct that like so and stick that in there, and then that. That to me looks a little better. I think I think that works a, a little better compared to uh, what you know th that that monstrosity of a cannon. <laughs> this, it's it's not it's not great, but uh, it does work a little bit better. It the proportions are are a little bit better there. So that's a thing you can do if you if if you really want to. Now I gotta remember how to put this thing back together so that goes that goes in there that and that then that goes on there uh-huh all right there we go and now we've returned it to the the way it's supposed to be built so that's really so that's really all I have to say about the set and its price point and all that. But um, we're not quite done yet because I do want to take another in more in depth look at the box <laughs> because uh, a, co a couple years ago now th this was one of this was one of the sets that I really liked in the 2018 Summer Wave was the Clone Trooper and Jedi Battle Pack. It was a nice figure pack, but other than that, it made no sense whatsoever. Uh, because, uh, and a lot of that had to do with the box art and what the heck was that vehicle it came with and all, and all that. This is sort of kind of another one of those another one of those situations where it's like, okay, the set's fine, the minifigures are definitely good, but what is with the box art? What are they doing here with the box art? So earlier, I mentioned that you know these battle droids first appeared in canon in Ambush, the first episode of the first season of Clone Wars. And the planet they were on was the moon of Ragosa. Uh, this is Ragosa in the background. Why is Ragosa here in, in the background? I mean, yeah, we did see this tank with these type of battle droids on Ragosa. But um, these guys were not there. <laughs> As you know, uh, older Ahsoka Tano with her with her Siege of Mandalore clone troopers were uh, were not in that first episode of Clone Wars. I mean, gosh, we had. I mean, uh, imagine imagine going to someone in two thousand eight, October third, two thousand eight, going, "Hey, so you just watched the series premiere of Clone Wars on TV? You guys want to see the series finale?" And then you know, skipping ahead twelve years or whatever, and then what? And then it's. And then watching the Siege of Mandalore. So I, I do find it a little bit weird that uh, Ragosa is what is the background of the box here. I mean, Man Mandalore would have made more sense, but also at the same time it wouldn't have made more sense because the Separatists weren't involved with the Siege of Mandalore. That was the, that was the Republic versus, you know, the Darth Maul's loyalist Mandalorians. So, uh, okay. So, I mean, maybe it could have been, this could have been the Battle of Urbana since we did see, you know, the AATs on the bridge. Um, Ahsoka didn't participate in that battle, but she did join, you know, kind of rejoin Anakin and Obi-Wan immediately following that battle. So that would have maybe made a little bit more sense. Uh, so, you know, just looking at the back here, and, you know, it's more, it's more Ragosa. So, I mean, so, and they, I just, I just find what they decided to put on this box a, a little bit odd in terms of the packaging. It's not as odd as that Clone Troopers and Jedi Battle Pack from 2018. That takes the cake in terms of just weird Star Wars packaging because it's like, okay, so what battle, what, what battle was this? And it's like, what, you know, what is this vehicle that's in the battle pack? And why, why are they attached to me? Because that's Jabba's palace in the background. What, what is this nonsense? <laughs> so it's not quite, it's not quite to that level, but I do, but I do sort of kind of question why Virgosa is in the background of that box. So, 
So yeah, that's uh, that's kind of my thoughts on this set in general. I I you know just to recap, I I do I do like this set. It's for $30, it's it's a it's a good set. For $40, not so much, but you may have to pick it up at that price because of the aforementioned, you know, this is a high in demand set because of the minifigures involved. So uh, if $40 is a little too much for you, I totally understand. I'm with you. Uh, if you can find it for $30, that would be great, but you may not have that luxury. So I, I guess I recommend it. Um, it, it's a, it's definitely a good set for, you know, with that caveat. So I'm, I'm just going around in circles at this point. So I'm just going to wrap up. So, you know, thank you for watching. Uh, please remember to like, subscribe, all that stuff. Remember to follow me on Twitter, Instagram. Those links are in the description below. I will see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.